When word first started getting out about NID's plans to build a major new dam on the Bear River, people were very surprised. Most folks hadn't heard that NID planned to build a 275 foot tall dam. They hadn't heard how it would inundate the last six miles of publicly accessible, free flowing river on the Bear. They didn't know that it would displace dozens of families, destroy beloved swimming holes, and Native American cultural sites. My great-grandma Lizzie Enos called it Omen Theo, which means the river of the roundhouses. You know, as indigenous peoples from um, these lands here, these are our homelands. You know, we care deeply and passionately what's going on here, and so much that it hurts your heart, you know. Strangely enough, to have something um, like the idea of a new dam to be the catalyst into that way overdue conversation. Um, it's one of those things that I always think is so strange. Um, the universe is strange. A lot of times something it takes something bad and then it makes us all rise up and then possibly something positive will come out of that. And right now at this moment in time with the conversation about a possible new dam on the Bear River, another dam on the Bear River. It has brought to light a conversation that's never happened that needs to happen and that is the story and the history of the people who were here before the gold rush. And unfortunately that story is very dark, it's very sad. It was almost a complete genocide here, it really was. And there are so few survivors. Um, it's taken us so long to be able to come out and have the strength and courage to stand up to something like the threat of a dam on the river. If they do flood Bear River, my people are buried there. My people have lived there and have done um, ceremony there. So that area is still being utilized today. Richard Johnson, the chair of the, of the Nevada City Rancheria, just blew me down last spring. And he said, the violence represented by that dam being built on that river and destroying it, the last section, that violence is the same violence that took my people from the 3,000 happy, wealthy people down to 18 living in poverty and confusion. The indigenous people said enough's enough and we speak for the land because it can't speak for itself sometimes and look what we've done because that's your connection to Mother Earth. And that's our lifeblood, the water. So taking your mind's eye, uh, the vision of a reservoir that is a appealing thing and replace it with an industrial reservoir that is raised and lowered in order to capture a, a water resource. Once you get out of the city and you just lay on a rock and, and just 
and listen to the wind and birds and you see ants crawling and when you're out here it's like they're part of you you are part of them you know it's like you're connected you know and you just, you just don't want to leave and you just feel like you are a part of this creation and if it dies you die water issues are just really interesting to me because it affects so many people and so few people are controlling the water and if water affects everyone because everyone needs water to live and yet at the same time I don't think enough people realize what's really going on with our rivers and streams and creeks. The three forks of the Yuba and the other fork over here which is the bear uh, and, and whether you realize it or not actually Grass Valley is in the watershed of the Bear River. NID has said that they will use eminent domain to make us leave our homes. There's about 25 homes in this beautiful Bear River Canyon that are threatened, um, and we're not going to leave. We are very concerned about the potential threat to the Yuba. Already, nearly two-thirds of the water in the Yuba River watershed is diverted towards the Bear. They divert more water from the South Yuba. So now you've got three kinds of water. You've got the Middle Yuba water, you've got the Canyon Creek water, and you've got the South Yuba water. And they put it into this canal that runs down side by the Bear. So we call the Bear River the workhorse of this whole hydropower system because all the water is transferred to the Bear so that it can make as much power as possible. But NID has not spelled out what the project need really is. Rather than provide for current NID residential customers, most of whom live at an elevation higher than the dam site and won't be served by it, the new water storage may instead facilitate more residential sprawl, including as many as 20,000 homes that will be constructed in Lincoln within NID's service area. Average of one dam every six days is removed in the United States. Folks aren't building new dams. They're looking forward now on how we can improve our rivers, how we can bring fish back, and keep recreation opportunities that our families and communities really need. In a time of record drought and climate change, we need much more creative solutions than just another big expensive dam. I just think that if enough people came out here to see what you can get out of being out here, you totally become a different person. They leave with a smile on their face and say, I want to see more of that. We represent groups like the Sierra Club and American Rivers and many of those conservation organizations and their membership understand that the era of dam building is over. They're going to work to oppose the dam, not just here in our community, but in Sacramento and in Washington, D.C., and wherever it takes to stop it. By working together and holding our hands together and speaking in one strong voice, can we unite? and make sure that the Centennial Dam doesn't go through because of the negative impacts it has on our people and our life ways. Firstly, we believe there are less environmentally destructive ways to deal with our water challenges and more cost-effective ways to find solutions to those challenges. We believe building a new dam on the Bear River is a relic of the past. Using sound science and good analysis that we can offer an alternative vision for the water needs of our community that we perhaps can meet our needs not with new dams the old way but through increased conservation efficiency restoring our mountain meadows taking care of the health of our forests doing the type of good conservation measures that are proven to make a difference 
and this type of old thinking, this should be a, a last resort, and we're not there yet. NID would like folks to believe that this dam is going to be built, that they've got it all sewn up, that they have the money, everything. But you know what? They don't. They know that all we have to do is change the minds of five people on the Nevada Irrigation District Board, and this will go a completely different way. And so that's what we're doing now. We're building the grassroots, building a coalition, and we're going to change those minds. Park is ready to adopt the bear and take whatever steps are needed to make sure that this archaic 19th century idea of building a dam does not happen in the 21st century. Not here on the bear, not now, not ever. When I'm connected to rivers and the ecosystems are healthy and viable, it brings a completeness to life that I don't think that we can find anywhere else. Little bird, may you be forever flying free in the light of the sun. Song your spirit sing.